Hey everyone, welcome to another video today. What we're going to be taking a look at is the Big Ten Conference. We're going to see who has a legitimate shot to make it to the playoffs, to make it into the Big Ten Championship. We know the Big Ten is one of the deepest, most competitive conferences in all of college football. Go ahead, hit that like button and subscribe. So the Big Ten, they are the national reigning champions. Obviously, Michigan won the 2023 national championship. But Michigan's been completely gutted from the top to the bottom. Harbaugh's gone. He's off to the NFL. Coordinator's gone. But Sharon Moore, he's now the head coach. He's going to be keeping a similar type of offense, but a lot of those guys are gone. The entire offense is off to the NFL. Pretty much the whole offense got drafted. The offensive line's been completely picked apart. They had a top three offensive line for Four straight seasons. All those guys were seniors. They're gone. They only have one starter back on the entire offense. And they have a lot of starters back on the defense. So we know that they're still going to have a top 10 defense no matter what. But who has a legitimate shot to win the Big Ten this season? We obviously know with the new college football playoff that's going to be kicking off this year. You have 12 teams getting in. But the four winners of the Big Four conferences of the Power Four get bye weeks. So they get to skip the first round, straight shot to the playoffs, straight shot to the second round, and then you're going to have eight other spots. One spot's going to go to the highest ranked group of five champ, and then just the rest of the spots is going to be everyone fighting over spots. Seven spots, everyone's going to be competing for. We know how deep the SEC is this year. They have legitimate seven to nine teams that could have nine to ten wins competing for a playoff spot. But obviously, you're not going to get seven or nine teams in. That's There's not even that, that many spots. And the Big Ten. You know, they might not be as deep as the SEC, but their good teams are just as good as the good teams from the SEC. So how many teams is the Big Ten going to get in? Whoever plays in the Big Ten championship is probably going to make it in to the championship anyway, so that really doesn't matter. But when you're looking at these teams, so let's pull up the Vegas odds. Let's try to see who we think is going to make it into the Big Ten championship and thus have a legitimate shot to skip the first round and get that bye week. And I do have predictions videos for all of these teams, so definitely go check those out. Obviously, if you ask anyone who watches college football, if you had to pick two teams that are automatically going to get into the playoffs, who's the two teams? They're going to say Georgia and Ohio State deservedly so the top two rosters in all of college football the ap poll and all the polls they keep swip swapping back and forth of who's going to be number one to start the season it really doesn't matter let's just say they're both in so now we have 10 other spots for everyone else to be competing for ohio state as of right now has the best odds to win to go to the big 10 and win the big 10 championships so you have ohio state coming in best odds next you have the Oregon Ducks. So one of the new teams to the Big Ten, obviously, from the now defunct Pac-12. Oregon is loaded. Ohio State is loaded. They obviously have Will Howard coming over from Kansas State. And he's going to be taking over the reins on offense. You have Chip Kelly now as the offensive coordinator. Kyle McCord, he's gone. He's off to Syracuse. I'm not trying to bash McCord, but I think everyone would, would agree he was probably the piece that was holding them back from national title aspirations last season. They have a loaded defense. They have eight or nine starters back on the defensive side, a defense that finished number two nationally. A lot of people have them as the best defense in all of college football right now, and they worked the portal hard on that defense. They got the safety from Alabama. They are loaded. They're going to be laying it down. The the Big Ten's probably the best defensive conference as of right now, but Ohio State, you have Egbuka back at wide receiver. You have Jeremiah Smith the five-star at wide receiver. You're going to have Will Howard. You have um, Quinchin Junkins transferring over at the running back position. Ohio State probably has the deepest running back room and a very experienced offensive line. So you see why a lot of people are even picking them to win the national championship as well as the Big Ten. And then you have Oregon Ducks. Oregon Ducks also have a top five roster. This team is loaded. Obviously, you had Bo Nix last season, Heisman level play. He's off to the NFL. They pick up Dylan Gabriel transferring over from the Oklahoma Sooners. I love that move. He's going to fit in perfectly with this offense. To me, his game plan is very similar to Bo Nix's. I think they're going to put up similar numbers. He can run, he can scramble, he can throw. Uh, he's probably going to have four or 500 rushing yards, probably going to throw for 4,200 yards. They're going to light it up. 
their offensive roster is loaded. Their defensive roster is loaded. A lot of people in the Big Ten think, oh, well, that's just you know a lighted up team from, from the Pac-12. They don't know how to play trench football. They know how to play trench football. They're deep on both lines, offensive line, defensive line. I think they could technically slug it out with anyone, and they have depth. Uh, Dan Lanning, he's been recruiting at a high-level top five, and he's been working the portal top five. So this team's built, and they're deep, and I think they know how to make it through Big Ten scheduling. And then you look at the next odds, Penn State. Penn State, man, James James Franklin, if there was a 12-team playoff, they make the, the playoffs six of the last eight years. Penn State perennially, every season, 10-2. and two. I feel horrible for them because they haven't been able to get past that ceiling, but they've had to get, go through Michigan, Ohio State, Iowa. So they've had a tough slog that they've had to go through. But now, if they just play the way they've been playing and go 10-2, and two, they make the playoffs coming out of the Big Ten. So just keep doing what you're doing. Just be a little better. And that's where the offensive side comes in. Obviously, they've changed offensive coordinators. Their offense is going to be a lot better. They also have one of the best running back rooms in the country, one of the best one-two punches. Drew Waller, five-star quarterback, you know, he only had like two picks last season and 20-something touchdowns. He just needs a good offensive coordinator that's going to let him spread it out. They've done that. They work the portal. This team is very talented. Manny Diaz gone on the defensive side. But you're bringing in Tom Allen. He's going to be just fine. They're going to stay aggressive. Watch out for Penn State. They're a sleeper team coming out of the Big Ten. After that, we already spoke about Michigan. Michigan's having to retool this entire team. Don't sleep on them because they're going to line up in the eye. They're going to run downhill. They're going to play the trenches. All of that's going to stay the same. But naturally, just having won a national championship, you have to expect for them to take a little bit of a step back, right? It just only makes sense to me. And Michigan fans, I would say, are very down to earth. You know, they've been through it, not having won a championship since I think the 80s, or, in, or it might have been the 90s, I don't know. But not having won a championship in a long time, and they finally got their hands on one. They appreciate that. They know it's not easy to come by. A lot of teams' fans, once they've had success, oh, they're going undefeated every year. And it's like, it's not realistic. And this team's replacing everyone, including the coaching staff. But I think Michigan's going to be just fine. Don't worry, but this might not be their year just yet. But I would still say they still have a chance to make the Big Ten Championship, to make the final 12 and make the playoffs. That's legitimately there because the talent's still there and the scheme is the same. USC, fifth best odds. Lincoln Riley, obviously Caleb Williams is gone. They fired the the defensive coordinator. He was garbage. He was awful. They're bringing in the defensive coordinator from UCLA. Their defense is going to be better simply because it cannot practically be worse. It was like 90th in the country last season. I think it's probably going to be 50th to 60th this year, and they're going to continue to keep making those steps. I love Lincoln Riley, but, man, you got to tighten up. But they still have uh, Miller Moss. They still have Branch at wide receiver. Lincoln Riley, as long as you have the offense that he can scheme up, you have a chance in any game. Because if it turns into a shootout, he can score 40-45 no matter what. It's just, is he going to give up 45 or 50? That's the biggest question. And the Big Ten's tough. They're going to slug it out. They're going to be physical. I still think they're going to have a good season. But I don't think they're going to make the playoffs this season or be competing for the Big Ten. Iowa, Kirk Ferentz, man, you know, they have a top 10 defense every year. And the fact that they even have a top 10 defense when their offense is a complete joke. They were 121st in the country last season out of 132 teams. That's pathetic. The, the fact that your defense is on the field the entire game and they still finish top 10, that's amazing to them. Very good at working with this talent they have on their roster. Obviously, he finally got rid of his son, but it's a Kirk Ferentz team. So I don't think the offense is really going to change much. It's going to be a very boring, very, very vanilla offense. But this is still a team that's loaded on the defensive side, and they could still go 9-3, and 10-2. and two. I don't think they're making, making the uh, Big Ten championship, though. That's, that's where I would end the legitimate shots to make the Big Ten. I think Washington, complete overhaul for the roster. They won't make it. Nebraska, Matt Rule, five-star quarterback, top 20 defense. It's not going to happen this year. They're still building the foundation. Wisconsin, it's not going to happen this year, but Luke Fickle will get them there. So who do I have? legitimate chances to make the Big Ten Championship. I think everyone's going to say the same thing. Ohio State, Oregon. In my predictions video, I have Ohio State beating Oregon during the regular season. These teams play during the regular season. But I make it very clear. If you win the first one, 
it's going to be really hard to win the second one. It's hard to beat the same team twice in one season. <coughs> Sorry about that. So I have Ohio State actually running the table this year, finishing 12-0. and I have Oregon finishing 11-1, and losing to Ohio State in a close one. But could Oregon win that first one? Definitely. I would not be surprised. It's practically 50-50 right now. We still have to see these teams play. So a lot of it's this is still early on. If Oregon beats Ohio State during the regular season, I think it's going to be hard for them to beat Ohio State twice. So whoever wins that first one is probably going to be the underdog, the second one. Either way, I have both of these teams making the playoff. So even if you lose the Big Ten, you're still in. You just don't get the bye week. But Ohio State versus Oregon. And as of right now, before having seen these teams play on the field this year, I have Ohio State beating Oregon in the Big Ten Championship, winning the Big Ten. So that's my breakdown of who might win the Big Ten for the 2024 college football season. Go ahead, hit that like button, and subscribe. If you have any comments, drop them below, and I will respond. Thank you.